What's up, YTPC? This is DSG Pipe Smoker with another pipe smoking video. Today I've got a tin of Cornell and Deal's Burley Fleck number one, unfortunately, and you can kind of already see it. See that little green fuzziness? That is some Cornell and Deal mold. Yep, I fell victim to the infamous. Cornell and Deal Mold. Now, there's not much of it here. This is actually a better, better picture of one right here. Um, let's see if I can grab that here. By the way, I took the uh, first part of the the lid off because it's kind of difficult to do this without a tripod, but that is definitely the start of some major mold problems. Fortunately, I caught it early, and uh, I called smokingpipes.com where I originally got it. And if we zoom out here for a sec, push this out of the way. And they sent me. Hold on a second. This box. You can see. From Ladisi Enterprises, which is smokingpipes.com. I removed some of my packaging information, but after I told them about it, this was on Thursday, I believe. This is being recorded, um, see, Monday the 7th of October, 2016. So, I bet we have it opened here a bit. As you can see, it's packaged by Aaron. How am I going to do this? You guys are probably cringing. Okay, hold on a second. Alright, we're back. Sorry about that, I uh, couldn't do it one-handed. box kept moving around, so this was packaged by Aaron. So that's cool. This is the receipt that they sent um, after I told them about my Cornell and Deal mold. Um, don't do. So it looks like they didn't charge me. I didn't think they would, but um, basically this is just me reporting on not only my Cornell and Deal mold, but uh, smoking pipe, smokingpipes.com response to it. And yes, I did perforate the uh, the tape or cut the tape so I can open this with one hand while recording it better. Okay, hold on a second. Alright, so here we are again. I apologize, guys, but I'm doing the best I can with what I got here. I really need to get a tripod. So, I've opened the box up. Let's see what smokingpipes.com sent me. Again, this was after I told them about my Cornell and Deal mold. Let's see what's in the box. So we've got another tin of the Burley number one, which is very cool. Uh, looks like they got that little slip that they normally put in for estates. I'm gonna set that aside. So, 
So here's this container. Now, before I open this container, I want to share with you a theory that I have. Um, there's been a lot of complaints about Cornell and Deal recently, and people are finding mold in their tins. What I've noticed is kind of a pattern in these complaints, and it would appear that um, I'm sort of repeating the pattern, but they're all... Um, all of the Cornell and Deal mold complaints are coming from pressed tobacco, in this case flakes, that are um, that are packaged in tins. So, if you think back to like elementary school, middle school, high school um, science, and you remember how mold works, it would make sense that if you took, you know basically organic material that's a little bit wet, and these flakes are um, a little bit wet, as most pressed tobacco is, and you put them in, con in a confined space, uh, sealed, and they're all together like that. If there's mold spurs and, sorry, mold spores in the tobacco, it would make sense that it would then spread throughout the rest of the tobacco. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and try to open this. I don't have, I don't actually, see, I don't have much for fingernails. Oh, I can actually get this, never mind. I was going to use my knife, but it looks like I can do it. Now, here's the real feet. Can I open it with one hand? Maybe. Oops, let me move my finger out of the way. There we go. Sometimes I amaze myself. Look at that. God, sometimes I am just awesome. Okay. So. Come on, you bastard. There we go. So far, so good. Let me get a whiff of this can. Okay. It smells very similar to this tin did when I uh, first got it. It's similar, but it's not quite the same. Um, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Probably a good thing, because if it smells different, and the old Cornell and Deal stuff had mold to it, um, this is probably what it's supposed to smell like. So, let's take a look at these flakes. Or it looks good. So far, so good. It is a little bit wet. So, based off of my theory, what I'm going to do with this before I put it in the jar, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out flat. Um, all the flakes out flat and evenly and distribute all the individual flakes so that they dry out. Um, and once they get dried out to the point that if I were to rub them out and smoke them, I could. I'm going to put them back in the tins, but hopefully, you know, opening them up like that and allowing the tobacco to breathe a little bit will solve the issues. So, the other thing I want to do, since we're talking about Cornell and Deal products and the potential for mold, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to grab this. Now, my theory is that there's not going to be any mold in this tin. Um, I purchased this a while ago. 08, 17, 16. I think that's the date of the... I don't know what that is. Um, I think that's the date that it was tinned. 
So that would be what, August 17th, 16? I don't know. Um, but this was... Hold on a second. Okay. So I got 20% battery life. So I'm going to try and make this quick. If you go back to my last um, box opening, where I had the smokingpipes.com box opening, this was in that order, and so was the uh, Burley Flick number one. But I'm going to open this and just double check. But my theory is that because this comes as, um, well, not pressed tobacco, as kind of a rough cut, I don't think I'm going to have any issues with mold with this, but I'm going to double check anyways. So yeah, that, um, definitely looks... Like Haunted Bookshop. Give me a, hold on, give me a second. Smells like it. If you're interested, I did a review on this. Um, just search on my, uh, on my channel. But I did do a review on this, and I was very happy with it. Hence why I'm replenishing my stock. But, so far that looks good. Um, anyway, I'm going to set this aside. What was I going to say? Okay, so, one other thing. Let me bring out this guy. So we have something to look at other than two pieces of paper. So, here are my thoughts on all this. I think that... Until Cornell and Deal can remedy their issues with their pressed tobacco that they um, sell in tins, I think what we should do is start buying the Cornell and Deal blends in bulk, particularly the flakes. That way, the tobacco will have will give some time to uh, air out. Um, also. I don't think that we should completely boycott Cornell and Deal. I think that, you know, with the F... Alright guys, I'm back. Sorry about that, my battery died. Um, so, I got the tobacco spread out, which is something I did while my phone was charging, basically. And I'm just letting it air dry and checking out each individual flake to make sure that it's all good before I put it in the tin. Or, I'm sorry, the jar. But, going back to what I was saying, I don't think we should boycott Cornell and Deal. A, they make really good products, even though they can sometimes have issues with mold. I mean, I guess sometimes that happens, but the other issue is, um, there's that whole FDA thing with them trying to basically tax and regulate tobacco out of existence. So, we really need to support these companies as best we can. I think the best way to tackle this whole Cornell and Deal thing is if you are going to buy the pressed tobacco in the tins, basically do what I'm doing and spread it out so that it air dries and you can check each individual flake. Or, preferably, if you can, buy their flakes in bulk. Um, or just don't buy their flakes at all, really, until they can, you know, remedy the issue and let us know that it's been fixed and we can go back to buying tinned pressed tobaccos from them because that seems to be, you know, the tobaccos that are having issues. But that's what I would suggest doing. Also, I'd like to give a big thank you to SmokingPipes.com for sending me the uh, tin of tobacco without, you know, really asking any questions about the Cornell and Deal mold. Guys, I really appreciate it. It's been awesome. You guys have great customer service, and you're very generous. Also, guys, don't take advantage of Cornell and Deal's generosity. You know, and tell them you got some moldy tobacco, just so you can get free tins. I know that in this community, I probably don't have to say that. But just to be on the safe side, 
I probably should. You know, it is going on YouTube. Also, if you guys, if any of you guys watching have any suggestions on how to store the Cornell and Deal tobacco so that there's no mold issues, or at least the mold issues are um, minimized, or just, you know, how to prevent mold and tobacco in general, leave a comment, or better yet, for the betterment of the YTPC in general, uh, do a VR to this video, so we can all learn and we can all be better off in terms of, you know, preventing mold, especially in Cornell and Deal products. So that's my Cornell and Deal mold video, and basically showing how uh, SmokingPipes.com responded to it. This has been DSG Pipe Smoker with another pipe smoking video. You guys have a good day.